Uh, first of all, thanks, Dr. Hicks, for uh, the introduction and to the LLC committee uh, for inviting me to talk at the inaugural LLC kickoff event. Uh, I have to say that the actual event, or the actual invitation came a few weeks ago uh, when my colleague Tom Colbert, who's not here right now, uh, asked me to be part of the panel discussion. Uh, I found out a few days ago it was a panel of one. Uh, so he had me, Colbert had me, uh, checkmate. Um, one of the themes that I've seen this year uh, is success is a choice. I've seen it on t-shirts and so on, and I agree with that in principle. Uh, but I'd also like to say that surveys of college graduates show that something like about 75% of their college satisfaction depends on who they hang out with. It depends an awful lot on who their peers were when they were in college. So success may indeed be a choice, but it seems that when college students have a bunch of folks to live and learn with, those good choices are a lot easier to make. And of course, that is exactly why we're here tonight. At this point, I'm thinking that just maybe the students in the LLC are a bit overwhelmed. You've been hit with lists of things to do, lists of things to not do. You've gotten instructions and syllabi, invitations, and I'm sure it's been a real whirlwind this week. During Freshman 101, for example, just the other day, I personally gave you a list of 10 items, each of which had multiple bullets. And I also know that you learned the Jaguar fight song at orientation. I heard it. So tonight I've decided to talk just a few minutes about something that's much less confusing and highly relevant, and that is this. My title is The Unicorn and the Wolf Pack. And at this point, I bet Tom Colbert, Dr. Hicks, and the others are really regretting inviting me at all, and I got checkmate right back. Uh, but I actually hope this will whittle things down, uh, whittle down all the things that you've heard, uh, down to some bare essentials. Let me start with the unicorn. It's a wonderfully rare and highly valued creature with super magical powers. And I'm sure that more than one of the professors in the room right now can actually prove mathematically that they don't even exist. And the biologists are in the back saying, Ah, there's no experimental evidence for such creatures. But I'm a physicist, and we can invoke the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And so I can choose to use the species of unicorn in a much looser way than other people. So I'm not confined to talking about those unicorns. I'm talking about human unicorns. Maybe the exceptional teacher, or the nurse or the doctor, who is so highly valued, but unfortunately, at times, they can be rare. You know, the one who always goes above and beyond. The one you can really rely on. For example, as far as I'm concerned, my auto mechanic, Andy Payton, Columbia County, is a unicorn because he always gets the fix right the first time, and I trust him like a member of my own family. The list could go on, but I'm really wanting to talk here about student unicorns. They are like the magical unicorn, the mythical unicorn. They are exceptionally high, they are exceptional, they're highly valued, and they're quite rare. They are the students who have a special ability to always go the extra mile in a graceful but very intentional way. They're persistent and they are productive. And by now, with a show of hands, I would like to ask the faculty if they have ever seen such a creature. Ah. I, for one, know that they exist. Because one of them made that device in my summer physics class this summer. That was supposed to be a flashlight. The students that worked on that went way above and beyond. They also learned about parallel circuits and switches, but they went way above and beyond. I actually think it's kind of beautiful. That was made by a unicorn, I promise you that. Uh, I'd also like to, th to think that, in fact, we might have recruited a few peer mentors who are unicorns this year, and maybe there are a few, maybe there are a few out in the audience right now I think I can see some little bumps growing on foreheads, Dr. Hicks. And as I've said, these unicorns are highly valued and at no extra charge, no extra charge 
I'm going to give you the secret formula to becoming one. And you can see all the students are very interested in becoming these students because of this. Um, and it involves, guess this, four easy steps. Just four easy steps. Here it goes. Number one. Number one, unicorns always show up five minutes early. That's one. They show up every time, on time. That's it. That's number one. You can do that. Number two, when a unicorn is at work or studying, they work or study. That seems obvious, but most students and professors can't make that happen uh, in a consistent way. That will require undistracted effort, turning off cell phones and distractions, and being ready to go at all times. It means laser-sharp focus for most of the day. It requires great discipline, but it is a necessary step to becoming a unicorn. So step number two, you got to work while you're at work. you got to study while you're studying. Number three, when a unicorn is at work or, or, or school, they smile. They smile. Nobody wants to be around grumpy professors, and certainly nobody wants to be around grumpy, complainy pants students. So smile and nod and enjoy the experience. That's three. Remember, there's only four. The fourth one is this. Unicorns stay and work or study five minutes longer than everybody else. Don't rush to be the first one out of lab. Don't be the one looking for shortcuts and the quick way through. Learning takes a little bit of extra time. Unicorns know this. Those are the four rules. Five minutes early, when you're at work, work. Smile when you're there, and don't be the first one out the door. And that's it. I told my son, who's now a sophomore in college, I told him this last year before he went off for his freshman year in school. Uh, he came back and he said that I was exactly right. He said he was quite surprised, as I'm sure that some of you are, but I promise you that, that what I just said, those four steps, are difficult to pull off every day. Every day, it's very hard. But you should try it anyway. Okay, so unicorn, four easy steps. I got it, it's simple, I love it, and it works. But what's the deal with the rest of the title, the wolf pack? What's the deal with wolf pack? Well, with all those unicorn superpowers you're going to have, you're going to have to decide what you really want to do with them. You need to have a vision for your success, and for the new students, that needs to include a very specific vision of walking across the stage and receiving your diploma as the class of 2020. And some, like me, would go even farther and say that you have to practice that. You have to practice that vision. And this is where the wolf pack comes in. You see, back in 1983, the North Carolina State Wolf Pack basketball team beat the mighty Houston Cougars and who were so good. The Houston Cougars were so good. They had Olajuwon, Clyde Drexler. These are Hall of Fame players. And they were so good that they were nicknamed Phi Slamma Jamma. Uh, but the Wolf Pack from North Carolina State beat them anyway, and many people call this the biggest upset in the NCAA basketball tournament history. And many give loads of credit to their coach, Jimmy Valvano. I don't know that much about coaching basketball, but I do know that one thing that the coach did was to dedicate one full practice a year to that vision, the vision of winning. He made the team do nothing but practice being victorious, that one practice a year. He made them cut down nets so they knew what it would be like and so they knew how to do it right when the time came when they won the championship. Jimmy Valvano. Talk about having vision. Jimmy V just knew they would win the championship. So I'd like to show you how this goes. I'm going to go off mic. You're going to be the graduate. You're going to be the graduate. This is going to be your diploma. So what I want you to do is she's going to come across and act like she's getting her diploma. When? 2020. Uh, Dr. Kaufman will probably be on the stage if you can come up, and so Dr. Kaufman is going to hand you your diploma, and we're going to practice this, and y'all let us know that she gave this right. So here's her diploma, and you're going to go, so we'll be up there, and somebody will have a post and stuff like that, Star Bangle Band, the, 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 the people up in the crowd going, ah! Your name? Huh? Aisha. 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 The Bachelor of Arts in, the Bachelor of Science in. 
Bachelor of Science in Cell and Molecular Biology, Aisha. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Thanks, Dr. Kaufman. Um, I was going to get Colbert to put a wig on and act like Dr. Keel, but he didn't hear. He wasn't here, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, Dr. Smith, we're not going to do all of them because we've got to eat dinner here, okay? All right, thank you. Uh, so so w every once in a while, I hope you guys will practice this uh, so that you don't forget why you're here. And why you're here is this. You're here to learn and to live and to graduate. Good luck and congratulations. Congratulations.